Om Shanti and good morning, good evening, good afternoon from wherever you're watching us and whenever you're watching us. Welcome to this um, dialogues about free from anger and really free from any kind of negativity. And um, my name is Olduz and we are having this dialogue today with Sister Sharona Zillerman, who is based in Israel but I think who is doing service all over the world, actually. She is the coordinator of the activities of the Brahma Kumaris in Israel. And she has a background in education, I believe. Uh, is, that, is that right? Yeah. And she is a very, very good um, speaker, actually, um, uh, in dialogues. She's very good. So I hope I do her justice and we get a lot of interesting nuggets about how to free ourselves from anger without suppressing ourselves. Welcome, Sharona. Hello, Om Shanti. Nice to see you. Likewise, likewise. Um, let's start with, um, with, with, an, with a, a question that's maybe on top of the mind of a lot of people when we start enthusiastically and we want to get rid of all this negativity, especially anger, as some people um, would, would have some doubts here and there. And maybe one thing that comes up for them is, um, shouldn't I never be angry? Um, um, is, or perhaps, isn't anger justified when you have to stop someone who shows violence, for example, towards yeah. you or towards another? Um, how, how do you see that? Yeah. <clears throat> Johanna had sent me a few questions that had come up during this last week. That, of course, is one of them. And it's a really good question. Actually, all the questions that came up, I think, are really good. And I think we have to be very, very clear about this. Um, of course, there are going to be moments when I'm going to have to use the mannerisms of anger, if we can define those, but without the actual energy of anger. That's the, the key. Um, so for example, if somebody comes at you with violence, you're going to have to protect yourself. And if that protection involves hurting another, um, hurt, <laughs> because you need to protect yourself. I mean, as much as possible, you're going to step back. You're going to uh, work, try for a, a, a peaceful means. But there are so many incidences in the world today in which you have to act um, somewhat aggressively just in order to protect yourself. And that's right, because your life is very, very precious, uh, even by attempting to remove anger in your life, you qualify as a peacemaker. And peacemakers are very, very important in the world today. Your life is very valuable and you have to protect it. So the thing is you're going to do so uh, without that energy of anger and even without that energy of fear ultimately in you. To, to bring it down to a more practical example, because most of us aren't dealing with people attacking us on the street and that level of aggressive or, or violence or anger towards us. Most people are just dealing with um, injustices that happen on a daily basis. Uh, for example, um, you've contracted out someone to do some renovation in your house, some plumbing, something like that, and you find out ultimately that he's cheated you and he's not done a good job and he's not even finishing it. So uh, 
of course you're going to bring him to court. Of course you're going to call a lawyer. Of course you're going to call in friends who are maybe more forceful sounding than you are. You're going to do all of those things. But to do them without feeling angry is, is a huge liberation and a vote for our good health. And I think I might have shared this already on this program, but um, one woman I know is a kindergarten teacher, and she's also a meditator, very interested in removing the energies of anger from her. And the kids are wild at the beginning of the semester um, because their parents yell at them, their parents get angry at them, that's the way they're being raised. And the only way they hear you, or as she says, the only way they, they listen to you and, and are obedient is if you raise your voice and you're getting angry and you show that kind of authority. So she said she just didn't know what to do because as a peacemaker, she didn't want to raise her voice and she didn't want to show an authority of anger. And yet the kids were really taking advantage of that. So ultimately she came to understand that the mannerisms of the authority of anger had to happen in the kindergarten. She had to raise her voice. She had to discipline, but inside her, no fire. Inside she was monitoring that she didn't feel any anger for her. It was more just like a game, playing a role. And she continued with her work of teaching them another kind of authority and another kind of, um, um, yeah, authority. And without fail, without fail, she's now been working uh, this way for over 10 years. She wins the kids. She wins them over within, say, a month or two months. They all learn the new language and the new authority. And she would hardly ever have to raise her voice or, or show that authority of anger. You see what I mean? Oh, you're on uh, mute. <laughs> yeah, thank you. I like what you're doing, what you what you just shared. Um, and it sounds like you're you're making a distinction between two things. Um, what we have to do externally and our eternal state whilst we are doing what we have to do externally and right. yeah and and what you what you uh, shared about this thing that you call mannerisms of anger i found it very interesting um it, it shows me that you know you're not going to lie there as, as a lamb going to a slaughterhouse and being slaughtered oh. um, just because you have decided to live free from anger. So yeah, everyone can do anything or a doormat for that matter. Exactly. Good and, English. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I've been practicing. Um, th that everyone can do whatever they want with you. Just, just because your intent or your intention to live free from anger. So we have to show up and we have to do what is needed. That's what I'm hearing you saying. Also in the example of this um, kindergarten teacher who needed to, to, to teach these children what mm -hmm. is okay and what is not okay. But she could keep herself um, internally calm Mm -hmm. um yeah I, I would be fascinated to hear more about how that dynamic happens how can one keep themselves calm whilst you're dealing for example with with a plumber who didn't do his job mm -hmm. and and you, you have to get back to that and you have to tell him that it's really not okay what he did or whatever maybe for that matter you have to protect yourself because a robber is at your house and you have to call the police and get rid of the robber how, how does that work and can you share a bit about more about this mannerisms of anger <laughs> um 
Yeah, I think that without also, getting yeah. angry. <laughs> yeah. I think that also connects to another question that uh, Johanna had sent in about um, how do we know that we're actually uh, dealing with anger, clearing it out of our characters versus just suppressing it? Because that's also a very good question, a very important question. Um, it's not an overnight process. You know, really uh, finishing, cooling off the fire of yoga in such a way that all matches are removed, all tinder is removed, and there's no more chance of that fire being lit. It's not an overnight process. It takes time. But more than anything, it just takes a continued attention on myself, which is useful if we clearly have an aim. And here, I strongly recommend that the aim should not be to remove my anger. Why do you want to remove your anger? It's because you, you want to be a wise person, maybe. You see yourself as wise and you feel anger interferes with that. Or maybe you want to be a peace messenger. Um, you want to be loving. You want to be reliable, dependable. An aim should never be defined in terms of what you don't want, <laughs> but what you want. And you keep that in front of you. And I know in my own case, I never focused on anger um, as much as I focused on peace or love or reliability um, or wisdom. We have to get to know these things again because ultimately anger in any form of negativity is just like a weed growing in a space in which there are no more flowers. Weeds overtake your garden if nobody's cultivating the garden, nobody's cultivating the flowers. There isn't the sunlight needed, there isn't the water or the attention needed, so weeds grow. So let me become very knowledgeable about words like wisdom or reliability or loving, especially knowledgeable in a religious or spiritual sense, not just emotional or psychological. And for me, it's as much as I could learn that the reason I don't like anger and I like love and wisdom <laughs> And, and peace is because actually this is what I am made of. This is my original nature. And so to give time to touching that part of myself, digging up that part of myself, because that's what's been suppressed. That's what's been buried. So really to give time to that part of myself, experience that peaceful, reliable, wise part of me and nurture that part of me. Slowly, slowly, that's like a light that's you know, going from dim in the room to full. And that's how bit by bit your anger is being removed. It's actually being replaced. Our lights, the light of our truth, our original nature, have almost been extinguished, which is why anger seems to be our, our nature, or stubbornness, or ego, or selfishness. But we're hurting, and we're, we're, we have so much like emotional pain in our life, because that is not the original nature. It, it, the, the all the sorrow in the in 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 my life is because I 
am not operating at full speed. I'm operating from a, a bulb that's just about to go out. So if I can start giving some sincere attention to the true part of myself, she's in there, you know, um, but to feed her either through um, readings from your own path or uh, readings which uplift you and, and remind you of the royalty of our human capacity, the dignity, the dignity of our human capacity. Um, meditation, our school, Brahma Kumari's Raja Yoga, this gives you lots of tools to connect with that divine part of yourself. And slowly, that begins to show up as an option when you do have to sue someone or you even have to move to defend yourself. You will do everything that's needed, but without a fire. With the, you know, it's a power. Uh, uh, peace is a power. Uh, love is a power. And it enables you to respond instead of react um, uh, with, with power. But you don't pay for it later. You don't suffer it later. See what I'm saying? And this is actually a sign that you're moving from repressing the anger to um, replacing it and coming back to spiritual health. Um, there's just much less reactiveness, naturally. It's not like you have to um, uh, internally uh, argue with yourself and you're like creating a performance. Mannerisms means a performance. Um, there's less performance and just naturally uh, the, the right power is there, the right feelings are there. If there's less reactiveness, it means there's more acceptance. There's just more acceptance of what's going on. And um, also uh, that means less judgment. You know, when we're operating from our dark side, meaning we're out of touch with the love that we're made of and the peace and the happiness. Um, that's a lot of insecurity, right? <laughs> and it's from that insecurity that we only, we're only trying to know our own self and our own value by constantly comparing ourselves to others. In this comparison, comparing, we judge. We're constantly judging. And, um, this is what limits our ability to just accept, just accept another, how he or she is. I'm, I am who I am. <laughs> and as that becomes more and more clear, I can, I let off more and more naturally this comparing, which leads to judging and ultimately even rejecting. Anger is, is like, parallel energy to all those things. So there's more acceptance. And I can even say <laughs> another sign that I'm actually cultivating my garden, my original flower-like self is, is beginning to grow and, and, and that's what's running the show, not the dark side of myself. Is that, now this is a, 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 a jump, this is a stretch, you could say, but if you think about it, you'll see it's true. Um, so one sign is that I stop thinking so much. Uh, in other words, I stop overthinking. We do a lot of thinking, which is totally unnecessary. And this is a sign of um, my light not on at full force. And um, judging is going on and comparing and competing oftentimes with my own self. 
And anger is never far away from that because anger is one of the first expressions of my dark self. Yeah, very, very interesting um, conversation. <laughs> I, could almost, I could almost take any every sentence and make that into a question, um, but um, I'm also seeing the time. But I, what I very much liked from what you just shared is that it's not about suppressing anger, but we have been suppressing our true nature which is actually more traumatic, if you wish, than this fuss about anger. Um, and, um, and also very true, I know it from my own experience, um, that where your attention goes, the energy flows and life grows. So if I'm constantly focused on removing anger, not wanting anger, um, the mind is not um, hearing the, the denial words like not. So all I'm putting in my own mind is that whichever I don't want. Whereas when I'm focused on what you were sharing is um, this sense of peace, the message of peace, or this sense of unconditional love, wisdom, that is where I'm, that's where I get my nourishment from. And that is what will be on my mind rather than getting rid of something that I don't want. And also, why don't I want it? And as you said, because there is a deep longing for those qualities rather than the anger. And that brings us actually beautifully a bridge that subconsciously was created by you and perhaps myself to the third and last question for now, um, which is about focusing on watering the garden of my mind. Um, if we want to engage our mind with a new way of living and we want to experiment with creating a better future, a peaceful future, and not only for ourselves, but for everyone, a, a future where um, you want to engage with, with a world where there is uh, zero um, anger and 100% peace, where there is zero fear, but 100% love. What is your experience with co-creating such a better world through a new consciousness? How do you engage with this? through your daily practice, because uh, spirituality is uh, something that is very much grounded, as far as I know, and I have seen it. It's not dreaming about something, but it's also making it real. How, how is it working for you, and what's your experience? First of all, my experience, and then how it works. <laughs> Uh, my experience is that you are not going to. Sorry, be we have we have five five minutes or so for I this, <laughs> <laughs> and then we are going to go through an experience, a meditation experience, just for you to know. Please go ahead. So first of all, um, understand from the beginning that this will not make you the most popular person on the block. It'll make you an odd one out if you know the expression. And people are initially might not even trust you and what you're doing because the whole world is in a reaction now. The reaction mode is the way of life. But you're not doing that anymore. You're bringing a thoughtful and... Um, value-based, principle-based, virtue-based response, response to life. So it's an upward climb whilst everyone else is going down. Um, that's how it is in the beginning until you get confident about what you're doing. 
and you understand that this is the call of time. It's it's not a selfish thing. It's not an idealistic thing. A good spiritual practice should give you a very clear idea of a larger picture of it all. And you can understand that this work that you've you've decided you want for your life is something which is going to serve the whole world. Because in the larger picture of it all, it's like we're at the, the world is at its night and day is coming, but who will bring that light? This is that light and you, the peace messenger, are the one who's bringing it. So you carry on. And although in a first phase, you're not the most popular person on the block, basically you're setting a new example. And when there is success for your own self, you will grow more confident. But when other people see that your peace in a meeting when everyone else is stressful, for example, that it works, that they, they actually want to turn to you for advice, they see the addition that your peacefulness brings to the meeting, then they too are going to appreciate and enjoy your model and they'll benefit from it. So that's my experience. Carry on and get more and more convinced of the value of choosing this kind of uh, way to live your life, understanding all its implications, immediate, local, for yourself, for your friends, but then even for the whole world. Um, but how we end up doing this, how we end up with such faith, such conviction that we can actually, you know, go against the stream, so to speak. For me, a very important thing has been to understand who am I cooperating with? Because in the question, it was, you know, this cooperation of um, working for a, a better world, I think was the phrase, I don't know, but I am not doing this to cooperate with um, people, with my friends. Um, they won't feel it as cooperation, as I was saying. Um, uh, I have to decide that it's a truth and I'm cooperating with truth. I can say it in so many different ways. This is my true original nature and I'm done with um, allowing my dark man-made nature to, to run me. So it's cooperating with my higher self. It could be cooperating with a godly task for world renewal. It could be cooperating with the needs of the whole of humanity, but be very clear with who and what I'm, I'm, I'm cooperating because um, you won't necessarily get support from the people around you. They will say, you're ignoring me, you're ignoring the situation, you're not looking at the problem, you're denying it, you're running away from it. Um, simply because uh, um, you aren't fueling your actions with that energy of anger. They will feel bad that they're not doing that. They will notice their anger and, and um, not like to see that in the mirror of your absence of anger, their anger will show up very clearly. So you kind of have to be ready and remind yourself that you're not doing this for them. You're doing it for a, a, a much different cause. And with that, you can keep on going. This is just a little, I would say there's actually a lot, but hopefully this can help. <laughs> yeah, and, and even in that little, there is a lot. <laughs> and uh, very much appreciated also what you said, um, uh, how to keep the hope, um, how to remain focused, and, um, and, and also have clear for oneself, what is it? That, uh, why is it that I'm doing what I'm doing and for whom am I doing what I'm doing? So stay also true to the self in that sense. And, and knowing that, um, as you were saying, people around us might not appreciate it, might reject us, might test initially. us initially. Initially. Because this is the truth. 
And this is what the soul, all the sorrow in the soul now is because we're, we're not acting truthfully. We're far from the truth. But bit by bit, people will come around because it truly is the time for the dawn to come, the night to finish. So it'll be revealed. Yeah, and I like the word initially. And it's not them being our enemies. It's just them not being used of this new way of living, this new style of not not having all those things and being happy constantly. New model, <laughs> new model of living. Oh, How yeah. does that work? Oh, yeah. yeah. You'll be tested. <laughs> Watch out. <laughs> there, there's one fellow who was telling me at his workplace they ran bets to see who could make him angry uh, because he uh, was always very peaceful and very determined to bring that peace. So they were out to get him off that throne. I, I bet yeah. he's a very strong personality then. <laughs> he is oh, a very strong. Very clear, as we were saying about these things and through that clarity determined. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That, that that's nice that, that's a nice little note to finish on let let's have a moment of uh, silence together to invoke um that better future and also to maybe have our own aim clear maybe the participants whoever is listening can do this and you can do this everywhere and anywhere but if you want to know more about what we do um, visit our website www bromacumaris.org and visit the click on the link center locator and find the nearest center to you to hear more about these things thanks Sharona and um, hope that the next conversation will will pick up um, uh, will continue on this because there is so much more interesting things to hear also thanks on behalf of Iwana um, facilitating this and organizing this thank you a minute to connect with that 